this is the sixth grade review. Please show all of the work that I show so you can prepare better for the test. Solve the inequality and represent the solution on the number line. So number one, S plus five is less than equal to 14. So S plus five is less than equal to 14. I want to get S all by itself. To do that, I need to subtract five to cancel it out, but I have to do it to both sides. So subtract five from both sides, and then S is less than or equal to, and 14 minus five, you should get nine. So remember, when you have this less than or equal to, the dots will always be covered, colored in, and every dot is. Because you ask yourself, can S be 9? And it can be. But S is less than or equal to 9. So look on your number line. Okay, so we know it can't be that one. Not this one. And that one's wrong too. So, obviously it's going to be this one colored in 9, and you're going to ask, what is less than 9, 8 or 10? And 8 is less, so you call the line would be shaded in this way, to the left. Number 2, S divided by 2 is less than 16. So it can't be 16, so everything needs to be open, and it is. So it's got to be less than 16. So to get S by itself, I need to get 2 off of it into the other side. S is being divided by 2. So if it's being divided by 2, you do the opposite, which is multiply. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. This cancels out, leaves you with S is less than 16 times 2 should be 32. So S is less than 32. Your answer should be B. Okay, number three. It's giving you the output. It's giving you the formula. So we need to find the input. So what plus 3 gives you 3? What plus 3 gives you 3? 0 plus 3 gives you 3. So that x would be 0. What plus 3 gives you 6? 3 plus 3 gives you 6. So the x would be 3. What plus 3 gives you 9? 6 plus 3 gives you 9. And if you can't think of it this way, if we're adding to go backwards, you just need to subtract. So like if I subtracted 3 from 9, I got 6. 3 from 6, I got 3. If I subtracted 3 from 3, I get 0. So if, you, if you're still stumped and you can't figure it out, always do the reverse. Subtract from your output, and that will give you your input. Kind of like when we're solving the equation. So 9 plus 3 gives you 12. And 12 plus 3 gives you 15. Okay? So we're just adding 3 each time. Number 4. The furniture Fanatics is selling dining chairs for $45 each. Chairs RS is $52 per chair.
So let's look at this. The top one would be chairs are us, and I underlined it in green. Chairs are us. So we're gonna I'm gonna outline this in green, and the fanatics is going to be in orange. Okay. This is chairs are us. Use the equations. Of the relationship to determine which line is steeper. Explain your reasoning. Well, which line is steeper? Remember we talked about the lines as it goes up when you're going up a hill, especially if you're running. Some of you have experienced running up hills. You know sometimes hills are steep. You don't like to go running up hills. Those are steep hills. But when the hills aren't very steep, they're okay. So steep hills would be going up the highest. So it's going to be chairs are us. But let's let's look at our answer choices. The chairs are us line is steeper because the prices are cheaper. Well, it is steeper, but are the prices cheaper? Chairs are us is fifty two dollars, and the furniture fanatics is forty five. So this part of the statement is wrong. B, the furniture fanatics line is steeper. Well, we've already said it's not steeper, so that's false. The chairs are us line is steeper because their prices are higher. And they are. So put a check there. The furniture fanatic line is steeper because their prices are cheaper. They're cheaper, but their the line's not steeper. So your answer is C. Number five, write an equation to represent the total cost T of any number of chairs C at each place. So, furniture fanatics, I did in orange, and we know that each chair is 45 C equals your total. Okay, this is your furniture fanatic. 45 for each chair, that will give you your total. And then chairs are us was $52 a chair equals your total. Now let's just see. Furniture fanatics, T equals C divided by 45. No. B, Furniture Fanatics is 45. Furniture Fanatics is 45C equals T. Chairs are us. It's 52 times C equals T. So your answer is B. Number six. Complete the table. Choose the correct outputs. So, they give you the formula. And you are simply putting this x in here and writing the formula out and giving you, giving us the output. So if I substitute 1 in for my x, so it's 1 minus 1, that is 0. Put 4 minus 1, and that's going to give you 3. 8 minus 1 is going to give you 7. So your answer is C. So you're just substituting the, this X into the formula. Number 7. A pizza place sells pizza for $7 each. So $7 per pizza plus a $4 delivery charge. If Pat orders three pizzas to be delivered, what will the total cost be? So I can substitute in three for P because she wants to order three pizzas. And this is pizzas. Okay, so seven times 3 plus 
four will give you the amount she will pay for pizza. Number eight. Molly is buying packages of party favors for her birthday party. Using the table as a guide, how many packages will she need to buy with 24 favors? So, if I create the table up here, and we have packages, number of packages, and number of favors. And I'm going to start with 6, and then I have 12. Okay, so I need to go to 24. And go 9. And then what would be here? And what would be here? I guess I should have let y'all start with the 3 and the 6. So, But anyway, this would be um, 6 and 12. So what's the relationship? If I set it up as a ratio, you can do them both ways. 6 to 12 equals x to 24. Okay, like from here to here. How did you get there? How did you get there? And then do it to the top. Okay, y'all y'all have been really good at finding the, um, the patterns on how to get that we've done in class with tables. So I think you should be able to get this one. Number nine. The table below shows the number of white flowers, W, that a florist puts in a different number of bouquets, B. If the equation for this situation is W equals A, B, what is the value of A? Okay, so find your W. I'm going to write it here. Find your W. Here is your W. So let's just substitute 12 in for W, okay? And then this gives me B. So let's substitute 2 in for B. So A times 2. So we're, we're down to solving a one-step equation. I want to get A by itself, so I want to get rid of the 2. Well, they're multiplying, so I need to... Divide by 2 on both sides, and then you will have A by itself. Number 10. Use the table below. You have the position, and you have the value of the term. What is the value of the 12th term in the sequence? So we want to find what the 12th term would be. So look at the relationship that they're having here. How are we getting from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 3 to 6, 4 to 8? And I want for 12. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. So there's a late relationship with x and y where your x is multiplying by 2 to get your y. Okay, so we need to substitute 12 in for your x, so it would be 12 times 2 equals your y. So you can find that. Okay, number 11, the graph shows the relationship between the number of laps Todd and David each run and the length of time it takes each to run those laps. Okay, so this is David right here. He's starting at 9 and then 10, 11 and then 12. 
with the number of lights here. So David is going to start with our X and our Y. So when X is 0, his Y is 9. So when he has 1 on the x-axis, which is left, he has 10. 2, he has 11. Todd Todd's going to start with 0, 0. And then at 1, he has 3 minutes. And at 2, he has 6. And 3, he has 9. So we're going to write the equation for that. Todd, 3 times y equals your x. Okay, that doesn't really sound like the way we set things up. Um, let's see. Todd x plus 9 equals your y. Well, 0 plus 9 did not give me my y here, so that one's not true either. Todd did 3 times my x is y. Okay, so 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. So Todd works out, but let's check um, David's. David, x plus 9, so 0 plus 9 is 9, 1 plus 9 is 10, and 2 plus 9 is 11. So that works out. So your answer will be C. Okay, one water filter will clean 40 gallons. Make a table to show the relationship between the number of filters and the total number of gallons. Choose the correct numbers of gallons. So one filter covers 40 gallons. Two filters would be how many gallons? Three filters, four filters. Okay, so you can complete the table and find your answer. Number 13. Graph the ordered pair, analyze the graph. Okay, this is from the question that we just answered. So, one filter, 40 gallons. Two filter, 80. Three, 120. Four, 160. So you just need to go and check and see which one measures up to what you, um, you graphed, if it was correct. I'm just doing this so y'all can have the visual. And X out whichever one did not come out like your graph. The previous question, number 12. And when I draw the lines like this, it just kind of keeps me aware of where everything is going. Okay, so which ordered pair goes with number 12? So take these ordered pairs. So, and this is your filters, and this is your gallons going down. Okay, number 14. Write an equation to determine G, the total number of gallons cleaned by any number of filters, F. So now we're just, we took it from the table, we graphed it, 
Now we need to write the equation. Okay, so I would kind of go back to my graph and kind of figure that one out. Okay, did we multiply 40 times the filter and get our G, or did we add 40 to the filters to get G? Did we add, did we multiply 40 to the gallons to get F, or did we divide F by 40 to get G? How did you come up with that? Number 15, write an equation to represent the relationship between the independent and dependent qualities. Okay, so see how you're going to get from 4 to 1, and 8 to 2, and 12 to 3, and 16 to 4, and 20 to 5. I will tell you this, remember, if you're adding, it gets bigger. If you multiply, it gets bigger. Subtraction and division get smaller. And we're going from large to small. Okay? Just something to remember. So if it's got to be either subtraction or division because it's going smaller. How can 4 get to 1? And then see if it works on 8 to 2. So they're not adding and they're not multiplying. To check your answers, substitute these numbers in for the X and the Y. If you substituted um, the X, do you get your Y? If I substituted my X, do I get my Y? Always check your answers by putting them in for the, that variable. Number 16, same thing, but it's getting from X to Y, it's getting larger. So you're not going to subtract from X, okay, you're going to get larger. So which one of these will help me get larger? Again, substitute your X for the X and see if you get your Y. Substitute your number for your X and see if you got your Y. Substitute your number for your X and see if you got your Y. Number 17. Ryan earns $20 for every lawn he mows. So $20 for every lawn. So 20 times X. So that's my lawn. Every lawn I get, I'm getting 20 bucks for. Write an equation that can be used to find T, the total number Ryan will get after mowing M. So, how, how, if I can put any number of lawns in there, and I can get my total by multiplying it. So, they used N, I used X, but you can find your equation. Number 18. The graph shows the total money earned, Y, for washing X cars at a fundraiser car wash. Represent the relationship with the table. So one car equals how much money? Okay, one car is going to equal five dollars. Two cars equals ten dollars. Three cars equals 15. Four cars equal $20. Number 19. Complete the table below to identify the dependent quantities. So, they're just wanting us to to substitute in X for in the formula and get our output. So, and they've already filled in the formula for you. So, 3 times 5 minus 4, what do you get? 11 times 3 minus 4, what do you get? 19 times 3 minus 4, what do you get? Number 20. 
write an equation to represent each relationship between the independent and dependent components. So again, how is 1 getting to 6? How is 2 getting to 12? How is 3 getting to 18? And they have to work the same for all of them. Notice that we're getting larger. Okay. And it's got to work. So if, if you're still unsure about yourself of how to figure this out, substitute your x and see if you get your y. Substitute your x and see if you get your y. I would try it on all of them to make sure they all work. Sometimes it may work on one or two, but not all of them. Substitute your x, see if you get your y. Substitute your x and see if you get your y for all of them. It's called checking your answers. It'll work. Number 21. So again, the same thing. How do we get from 1 to 3, 2 to 6, 3 to 9, 4 to 12? And again, we're getting larger. So, if you can't figure it out, process of elimination. Put your x in and see if you get y. Put your x in, see if you get y. Put your x in, see if you get y. Number 22. Write a verbal description and, and equation for the manip multi ah, multiplicative, okay, I can't say that word, relationship. Okay, so for every dollar that Anna saves, Andy saves 2. So y equals 2x equals y. So if I plug my 5 in, so 2 times 5 gives me 10. Okay, so see if they all work. B, Andy saves $2 more than Anna, so y equals x plus 2. C, for every dollar that Anna saves, Andy spends 2, so y equals 1 half x. D, Andy saves 2 less than Anna, y equals x minus 2. So plug them in if you can't figure it out and see which one works. 23. Same thing. How do I get from 1 to my x to my y? x to my y. Each batch of cookies uses 20.8. 0.025 cups of walnuts. So y equals x minus 0.25. B. Each batch of cookies uses 0.25 cups more than the number of cups of walnuts. So y equals x plus 0.25. C. Each batch of cookies uses 0.25 divided by the number of cups of walnuts. Y equals 0.25 divided by X. D, each batch of cookies uses 0.25 cups of walnuts. Y equals 0.25X. Number 24. Determine the relationship Determine if the relationship is mu multiplicative relationship. Explain. So look at your x to y relationship and see which one will work. No, since each output is 9 more than the input, the relationship cannot be written as y equals a times. B, no, since each output is 9 times the input, the relationship cannot be written as y equals 9x. C, yes, since the output is 9 more than the input, the relationship can be written as y equals ax. Yes, since each output is 9 times the input, the relationship can be written as y equals 9x. Number 25. Represent the relationship with a graph. So this is your, ooh, 
okay, they've, I'm just gonna let y'all know, they labeled this one wrong. This is, your, they said Y and this is your X, but this is always your X, this is always your Y. Okay, so that one it cannot be. I always look at that. So if I input, it's going up times three every time. So we just need to go and make some plots and see if it works. Plug some numbers in and see if it works. Either way, you can find out if it's going to work. So I would plug in 2 and 4 and see which one can come up, which one's going to be your graph. It's going to go up three times. Put x in, times it by three, and you'll get your y. Number 26. Determine if the relationship is an additive relationship. Okay, we're looking for an additive relationship. So, make your table if it, you like it better. My x and my y. So, this is x, y, x, y, x, y. So when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 4, my y is 7. Okay? A. No, the difference between the x value and the y, y value are not consistent. So it does, it cannot be written in the formula y equals x plus a. B. No, since each output is one more than the input, the relationship can be written as y equals x plus 1. C. Yes, since each output is one more than the input, the relationship can be written as y equals x plus 1. D. Yes, the difference between each x value and y value are consistent, so it can be written in the form y equals x plus plus A. So as I read those, you should have been marking out what was false. Twenty-seven. Look at your input, look at your output. See where the pattern is. Okay. A, no, since each output is four times the input, so it's saying four times the input, the relationship cannot be written in this form. B, yes, since the output is four times the input, the relationship can be written in this form. Yes, since each output is four more than the input, the relationship can be written in this form. D, no, since the, each output is four more than the input, the relationship cannot be written in the form y equals x plus a. So, which one of those is the correct answer? 28. You have your position and you have your value of the term. <clears throat> Use the words and the symbol to describe the value of each term in the relation to its position. Then determine the value of the 16th term. So I want to find what is the value <clears throat> of the 16th term. So this is your x, this is your y. What are you going to do? A, add 6, so n plus 6 equals 18. B, multiply by 6, so 6 times n equals 96. C, subtract 6, so n minus 6 equals 10. D, add 6, n plus 6 equals 22. When in doubt, sub the numbers in. Last one. Choose the equation that represents the relationship between the independent and dependent quality 
for each table. So how can four get to one? And so remember, it's getting smaller. Your x is getting smaller when you go to the y. So it's usually not going to be adding or multiplying. So I will eliminate in two choices for you. So put your numbers in and see if it works. Plug in your x for your x and see if you get y. Plug in your x for x and see if you get your y. If you have any questions, you can ask them on Google Classroom.